Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I wanted to address something, the G word in my life, the gym. Um, I just wanted to talk about it because um, it's coming up to that season where everybody's gonna be talking about the bloody fucking G word. And my opinions about it have shifted significantly, um, particularly over the past year. And I wanted to talk about why. I did a video a while ago called The Truth About Being Chubby. Um, my struggles with PCOS, although I put struggles in inverted commas now because I feel like I've made peace with a lot of it. And as I get older, some symptoms, especially pain-wise, have got a lot better. Um, other symptoms like hair loss and hair gain around the beard area, and especially like metabolism-wise, have got worse. Therefore, I've shifted my focus on what I'm tackling with that issue. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have polycystic ovary syndrome, which I'll, I've gone into in another video, I'll link it. Um, but something that I really wanted to address this year was my weight. I think last year was the year of addressing that I had weight and that that was okay. And um, really like sitting with that while also tackling the idea of body positivity and feminism and the privileges that come with being thin passing and all of that stuff. I felt like I like spent a lot of last year like processing all that and sitting with myself and getting a better relationship with food. And this year has been a year of actually exercising because I used to love to exercise. Uh, and the problem is I don't think my weight is ever gonna stop intersecting with feminism, even when it's not about how I feel about my body, how the media feels about my body. It's also just the safety of my body in the world. So before, um, I lived in two flats that were in a expensive area where I <laughs> I really couldn't afford, but I felt like I wanted to live in uh, for safety reasons as well as like pleasant reasons. Um, and it meant that it meant that I it meant that I lived very near a wood and a forest that was felt very safe to me. And um, I could go jogging in the morning, and I had this really big. Why do people pay for the gym? Oh, you can just be out in nature. Um, kind of forgetting that part of the reason I moved there is because I used to live in an area that I felt super unsafe in. Um, I used to be followed home on a weekly basis by men. Um, I didn't feel safe going out at night. Uh, when I did jog around the area, even in the day, I get people shouting threatening things at me and. Um, objectifying me as I jogged. So when I lived in that area, I, I joined a gym. I joined like a pretty cheap gym uh, because I felt like the idea of a gym in general was a luxury. So when I did join a gym, I was like, I'll just join the cheapest one. And that's what I could afford. Uh, but it also meant that while I was in the gym, I was being objectified. Like men were staring at me. I felt like I was always the only woman in the gym. Um, men would say weird stuff to me. I had a personal trainer situation where the guy was just really strange and I I didn't feel safe there either. So I ended up just getting heavier and heavier because there was, I just felt like there wasn't really a way for me to move and feel okay. Um, unless I was like walking around parks, but like, anyway. So yeah, I think there was a point in my life where I was super active, but that came with the privilege of living in an expensive area. And like, there's a lot of complicated socioeconomical, like, layers to that issue. Um, I have a cheaper living situation now, which means that I did have a little bit of expendable income. Uh, and I was very resistant at first to the idea of spending that on a gym, personally because I'd had such bad experiences with the gym before and because I felt like it was just a frivolity. It wasn't a thing that I should be spending money on. The thing that I really, especially when you have body issues, whether they're external or internal, um, a thing that I like always love doing is swimming. Uh, you don't have to carry your own body weight. There's not the embarrassment of sweat and weight around you. And, but it also like gets your body in this different area and it's very calming. There's one swimming pool that's in any way in reach of my house. And it's kind of always full of children, which is very, it's very stressful. Oh, it's just, I can't. <laughs> it just seems to be whatever time of day I went, constantly full of screaming children. And it also was just kind of a bit dirty. It was like full of like floating plasters and everything kind of smelled a bit weird. And I was just like, I don't really like that I have to pay six pounds to get in here and feel this way. <laughs> um, so I didn't really go to that very often. Um, and then I had a friend, Sana, who went to um, this gym uh, and it was subsidized through uh, our workplace and she suggested that I come with her um, to try it out. I'm not gonna name the brand of the gym for like so many obvious reasons, but mainly because like company wise, I don't think I'm gonna support them. But um, I, I kind of went with an open mind and I found it really appealing. And it was it is more expensive than I would feel like I should spend money on. 
but I don't know I just thought I would try it and I've actually found that it has been probably one of the best decisions I've made all year. I go at least twice a week, probably three times a week. I just find it's this liminal space in my life where I can just chill um, and I don't really need to talk to anyone, but everyone is quite friendly. The place that I go is full of women and there are lots of classes that are prepaid for. So I feel like if I do wanna pop into, pop into a gym session or a yoga session, I can, and it doesn't feel again like this big splurge. Because again, I think access to safety for, and comfort for women is like more expensive than it is for men in so many areas. Like when we talk about getting home safe at night, um, there's often a taxi involved. Like there's lots of like times of night where women don't feel safe to use public transport. And again, I think this is another area where it's like, God, I hate the fact that I have to like part with money and compromise to do this. But I, I felt like it was the right decision, especially now I, do have the privilege of earning more than I did when I was 22. And I felt like I was spending it on all these frivolous things like having meals out and, and thoughtless little things that, that added up. And actually I was like, well, yeah, this is expensive, but is, is, is it as expensive as all of the little things like coffees and stuff that I pay for that I'm like, why am I doing this? So anyway, in summary, I ended up splurging in my head on this gym. I wanted to go through all the reasons I hate it, and all the reasons I love it. Just so you guys can think about, if you're thinking about going to the gym next year, things to consider. Because I, I do think it's an extortion um, <laughs> that I have to pay all this money to feel, to have access to things that I can exercise my body with in the winter and just in the world we live in where I just don't feel safe. I, get, I even got followed, it's a long story, but I had, anyway. Things I hate about the gym. I hate that the towels I collect from the reception don't fit around my body. I, I'm a size 18. I'm by no means the thinnest person that enters that gym, but I'm also by no means the smallest person that enters that gym. And the feeling of not being able to close a towel around your own body um, is really horrible and so unnecessary. Like I don't understand. So there's always that transition from the showers to the lockers where I just feel like big and and it, it's just this like weird I don't know I guess the people who run gyms have never experienced that um but it's just this like really obvious thing that I'm like this is so easily fixed and must op must also be making other people feel really uncomfortable um so that's something I hate about it I hate that so before I went with my friend Zana to try it out before I signed up I did like approach the gym um a different branch of it and I went in just to like inquire and uh I got sat down with this man who was just like, he just wanted to, he was like, what are your goals? And I was like, I wanna swim. <laughs> because like there wasn't any other gyms in my area that had swimming pools. And he was like, but what are your goals? And I was like, I want to float in H2O. He was like, but what are your body goals? And I was like, to move in the water. <laughs> uh, and it, he just kept pressing for it. And he wanted me to name like a, a dress size or a weight before I signed up for the gym so that obviously they could measure in their data how well these people are doing. And then also so that he could sell me personal training sessions, which I was really 100% not up for. There are also these body tracks machines that I've used a few times, but like they're kind of everywhere and they're all about like measuring your fat and your muscle and stuff. And I, I get it and I, I like kind of, I'm curious about it. So I do it sometimes, but I also feel like the pushing of it could be potentially triggering for a lot of people. And it's also just like, so, I don't know, I get if you're trying to do something very mathematical with your body for a certain outcome or a certain reason that it would be useful. But I, th I feel like it's something that's just like worth flagging once and then not being in your face all the time. I don't know. Um, so that's just like a weird thing as well, the measurement side of it. The other thing that I kind of think is unnecessary is the culture around gyms that I'm like, not everyone likes this. Like the dance music that's played in all of the sessions. Like I wish there were like, different kinds of music played in different sessions and you could be aware so you could go to certain ones because I find club music really stressful and it just sets something off in my head that like makes me feel like it's 4am on a night out and I want to die and it, it, I just oh I wish there were more options for that I feel like there's this very like swishy ponytail um Nike brand um target market for these gyms that, that are kind of unnecessary because that target market is so easily hit because those people love the gym. I'm like, what about all the other people that also have money that will hand it over for things that aren't so in line with that, like pretending to be in their early 20s Ibiza lifestyle, I don't, why? If there was a spin class that played remixes of musicals, for instance, I would fucking be there. And there's also just this attitude of like, 
that you all know. So how to use the machines. It was kind of like an induction, but it was also like a kind of like, you know how to use this, right? And I was like, no, sir, I don't. But I'm also um, so uninterested in finding out that we can both agree that we can skip this step. Uh, so so yeah, there's like that culture of like knowing how to act and supposed to know where things are. Um, that I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, I really hope in the future there'll be more gyms so that we can choose and have like a competitive edge. Um, Government funded free gyms for all um, with libraries attached. So yeah, they're the things that I don't like about the gym and I kind of like deal with, but I'm also like now I apparently am a gym goer, I can see room for improvement, which is different from before because I was not a gym goer and didn't see these these issues, especially the towel issue, um, didn't see coming. Things that I love about the gym, I love the space that it gives me in my head. Um, I love that there is a steam room to stretch my muscles out afterwards. It makes it feel really good. I love that it actually doesn't take as long as you think it does and you can kind of fit it around your day. Um, I have done it in it's like a lunch hour before and I've done it like before work. I actually find really relaxing. And after work, it's a nice end to the day and it's just, it's not as much of a commitment as you think it is. Like I go to an event or a coffee, that always lasts more than two hours. So when I think, oh, I'm gonna go to the gym tonight, I'm like, oh, a commitment. But actually I never spend more than an hour in the gym total changing all of it drying hair whatevs um it's also just nice that the gym that i go to has like extras so it has hair dryers and straighteners and they give you towels and even have a swimming costume dryer which i'm like actual magic i, I love that it's just a space i can enter and be like cool and i always like um, turn my phone on silent and then just like in the room um, I also go with my friend Zana sometimes uh, that's been really fun I really like exercising with someone it makes it like less of a thing and still feels like quite social and you're not missing out on social time and you're doing it so I love doing that I also this is a weird one but I kind of love the fact that all the women just get naked in the changing room and not in a way that I'm like checking them out but more in a kind of like Oh, people with bodies who don't give a shit, especially like when you're going to a gym with like women who are a little bit older than you, they've literally just stopped giving a shit and it's so inspirational. Um, so just having that whole like, oh yeah, people have bodies and they're not always shameful and people just wander around naked and it's not a big thing. Like that has been so healing for me. We're just cool wobbly people hanging out. Um, I love it. Yeah, and I also feel like psychologically, I've already made the commitment to, to paying for it and it makes me not have to make that um decision every time that I go to invest in myself and to invest the time could because I already made that one big decision to spend the money I'm like I've spent the money now I might as well go I've already spoiled myself um with this access to exercise in peace and safety um so I might as well do it whereas I felt like before it was always this like thing of like oh I shouldn't take that time for myself because I need to go and do this other thing or my body's going to be rubbish forever so I don't want to go and, and invest any time in it right now or um you know you know just that kind of like that, those little decisions that I'm like actually this whole like model that was probably built for capitalist ideals where it's like get them to pay once in a big chunk and then you never have to pay again and then they'll keep rolling it over and forget to cancel I'm like well actually kind of in a weird way psychologically that works for me because it means that I've made this commitment to myself and this commitment to this time this, the, to get out of my head and get into my body that I'm like I've already made the decision so I can go as many times as I like and it doesn't feel as I don't know, I don't feel guilty for it in the same way, uh, which has been really interesting to realize that I could feel that way and that's probably how I was feeling was guilty uh, for spending this time on my body when I should be spending time on my mind and reading and doing this other stuff. But actually, without a body, do we have a mind? No. So I have to make sure I don't die. Um, <laughs> that's that's my, especially because um, as somebody with PCOS, I'm pre-diabetic like forever. Like I don't have diabetes, but I'll always be on the brink of it. Um, so like remembering that and being aware and being very sensible and looking after myself. It's very important if I don't want to die. It's that, it's that simple really. I know that exercising for everybody is really different. I just wanted to share. I feel like I've watched a lot of like my gym journey uh, stories where it's like you talk about the kind of things you do in the gym or like the weight you were before you start the gym and the results. And I, I'd never found those helpful. So I'm trying to make something that I would find helpful, which is how I feel uh, now that I've started the gym and the things that I really like about it and the things that irritate me, but I doesn't 
it doesn't irritate me enough not to go or not to participate in it because I think before those things like the culture around gyms irritated me so much and the kind of people who are like I've just been to the gym like make make me want to be sick um, but those things shouldn't get in the way of me treating my body well and um, investing time in myself um, so I just thought that was that's what I would have want to have heard is like the side of the gym that is psychological um so yeah I think again I don't want to talk from a privileged point of view even though like inherently I will be because I'm really lucky that I can afford a gym that gives you towels and hair straighteners and the swimming costume dryer which I'm never gonna get over um but also I think it's like a trade-in like there's always when you're at a certain level I think there's always stuff that's going to feel expensive to one person and then other people spend it on something else for instance I used to go out like three times a week and spend not think about spending much on like 20 pounds on alcohol every time I went out and now I don't do that at all and my gym costs way less than that um so it's, it's a weird cultural thing where I think it's okay to spend money on cocktails and top shop coats but it's not okay to spend money on gyms that that make you feel safe and nice so I think it's like weird it's like looking at your finances and being like what's cool about money and what I like about being an adult with money is that I can look at that number and be like that could be anything there are so many things I could turn that into 70 pounds could be a hundred Mars bars or it could be a really flashy dress that I wear once, or it could be 20 million packets of fruit, two weeks worth of oyster journeys. Um, and just knowing that you can turn that money into anything, as long as you're not wasteful and you're generous with other people as well, I think it's okay to spend that money on what the fuck you want, <laughs> making sure that it doesn't hurt other people. Um, and again, like going to the gym keeps me away from the shops and it keeps me away from other ways of spending money. So I think, I don't know, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I'm just trying to share, I guess, that I found it helpful this year and that it's something I wouldn't have considered. So this is the video that would have helped me, I guess, maybe. I have to reiterate, if it hasn't obvious already, that this video is not sponsored. I'm not gonna mention what brand of gym I use. Uh, and I have already mentioned the numerous problems with it. Uh, so like, I'd love if there was like, is there gonna be some, somebody make woke gyms, please. <laughs> that is my, that is my plea to the dragons. Can we have a woke gym? <laughs> Uh, I'm never gonna say the word work ever again. I've said that before. But yeah, I look forward to the future of gyms. Maybe I need to be the change I wish to see. But yeah, I've just been thinking a lot about access and privilege and safety and um, how now I have access to this thing, I realise how much it has changed my mindset and my life and how that this might be one of the things on my list of things that I'm like, when we live in a utopia, can everybody have this? Can this be part of the free things? Can this be like libraries and hospitals? Can we just have gyms for free? Diverse, accessible, nice, friendly gyms to think on. Maybe that's what all the money for that we're gonna save from being in the EU can be spent on. Okay, I'm gonna go. Um, thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Let me know if you have thoughts or experiences about the gym. If you have any questions or, or situations to share about gym experiences, let me know in the comments. If you want to support this channel, turn your ad blocker off. Cheers, mate. Um, you can share this video if you liked it. You can even join the Gumption Club, which is a Patreon group um, I run for people who tip me for these lovely free videos I put out. Uh, and in exchange, we have like a really cool secret Facebook group where we talk about creativity and life and we share resources and it's super fun. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Frogsnog out. <laughs>